How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live on a spooky edition, Halloween Eve. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. on Saturdays with Jim Valley, and Sundays, 6 p.m. with me. Happy Halloween. I guess I'll say it now. Happy Halloween, everybody. My entire weekend is slammed with macabre events for my children. Party after party. Started on Friday night. It's continuing every day. It, it, it's, I never knew Halloween extended into a three-day weekend. But you know what? Everybody's having fun. It's a great weekend to have, especially the weather here on the Northeast. It's uh, stunning out. So perfect Halloween weekend here in New York. But we do have a lot of wrestling to talk about. Obviously, the big story here, CM Punk, likely done with AEW. The buyout could be completed, close to complete. We're going to talk about that. They've had a lot of information in this week's Observer. Highly recommend you go read it. We also, on Wednesday, got glimpse and little previews of what's happening with Kenny Omega and the Bucks, and it looks like they are returning any week now. Next week, the following week, I expect them to be there for the pay-per-view. That show's also almost sold out, so we're going to talk about that. Shinsuke Nakamura facing the great Muda in Japan for Noah in January. This is a big, big move. And also, this is the first time this is ha- something like this has happened in a long time for WWE. So I want to get everybody's thoughts on that. Crown Jewel preview. Roman Reigns, Logan Paul, Jake Paul last night won against Anderson Silva. I want to get Matt Ryan's opinion on that. He's an MMA expert. He's going to be joining me after this segment on the show. He's at least here about two or three times a, a month with me. It's easy for me when Matt's here. But we have all this and a whole lot more to talk about here on Wrestling Observer Live, Sunday edition, spooky edition. Join us right after this on Sports Byline. We'll be right back. Wrestling Observer Live, Andrew Zarian here on a Sunday edition, joined by Matt Ryan of Catalyst Wrestling. What's going on, Matt? Nothing much, friend. Happy Halloween to you. Yeah, listen, uh, you also do playing... more than Catalyst, right? You do more than Catalyst. You yes. do some MMA coverage. Where mm-hmm. else are you? Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Matt Ryan Yells. You can find me every month on SB Nation's Combat Culture YouTube channel calling the UFC fights. You can find me a litany of places also on the A7FL 3-on-1 podcast for the American Sevens Football League. It's if the if the UFC ran a football league. No pads, no helmets, all action. You can check me out there and also buy tickets, CatalystWrestling.com. And also our new VOD site, StreamCatalystWrestling.com. Matches featuring MJF, Nyla Rose, Anthony Bowens. And more. And also, Andrew Zarian shows up sometimes. Andrew Zarian does show up sometimes. Once in a while, you'll, you'll get a wild Andrew uh, spotting at a Catalyst Wrestling show. I want to go dive deep into this now. Dave, on uh, this week's Wrestling Observer newsletter, been a subscriber, I think, almost 18 years, 20 years? Man, almost 20. Well, no, it has to be over 20 years. Man, you know, I, I'm getting old, I, and I'm feeling it every single day. Uh, Dave, this week in The Observer, had summer information about CM Punk and the status and what's going on here. And I find this to be fascinating stuff. Uh, nothing really out of the ordinary. I think we, we all could assume that he's likely finished with the company. But there were some tidbits here. One being, a lot of top names did not want to work with him. Uh, due to, I guess, relationships in the past and everything that, that's been going on in AEW. Chris Jericho even calling him a cancer in the locker room at one point. Uh, it is amazing how Chris Jericho has kind of taken this locker room leader position uh, over the last couple of months and turned it into a, a management position of sorts. But on Wednesday, mm-hmm. Wrestling Gang's Nick Houseman, you know Nick, I know Nick. Yeah, I Nick know got Nick. yelled at by Punk in that scrum, but I know Nick outside of that. You know, I've known mm-hmm. him for for years yeah. from his coverage at Wrestling Gang. No, yeah, I met him while he was producing Eric Bischoff's podcast like a yeah. million years ago. Yeah, uh, Nick Houseman reported that those from Punk's camp, and this is fascinating to me. Okay, this is the latest new piece of information here. Uh, Punk's camp said, and again, this is according to Nick Houseman, uh, that Larry was injured during the backstage altercation. And Larry had to have two teeth removed. I guess the the story was, and tell me if I'm wrong here, and Matt, uh, MG, our, our producer, he, he could correct me if I'm wrong because I, the last two days have been a blur to me. Um, did, was the report that when, when they kicked, and I'm using hand quotes here, when they kicked the door open, it hit, it hit Larry the dog and caused yeah, some sort that's of what happened. injury? Listen, yeah, I, that's, that's what's being reported. I, I never heard any of this, okay? 
Never once on the record or off the record was I said anything. And, and listen, by the way, everybody's told stuff off the record, right? And a lot of times, a lot of this stuff you really can't verify or I, I never heard any of this. This is one of those scenarios that everything that was said what was was reported. If yeah. this was mentioned at all to anybody while this altercation was happening or the days after this, where we got all this information to come out, um, I think this would have been, uh, I mean, to many, a, a game changer as far as Punk's reaction to things. If my dog, mm -hmm. if I'm sitting in a locker room, and no matter, I, listen, he was already hot, right? He was already uh, going nuts in that scrum. If somebody kicked my door open and it hit my dog in the face and my dog was obviously in distress and pain and he's bleeding, he lost a tooth. You know what? I may react the same way. I don't know. I would hope that I don't, that I would be able to control how I feel, but my dog's my dog. Yeah, no, if that happened to my dog, uh, <laughs> I would see red. I would definitely you see would. red, yeah. Someone someone may be unalive after that because if you if you if it's an accident, I'd try to calm down, but I'm very protective of my dog, especially when we're out walking. She's also her own worst enemy. Uh, she's, she's very sweet, but very stupid. Much I mean, like myself. nobody, this is, this is the thing. You, you know, you are a sweet boy. I don't know about Thank stupid, you. but you are a sweet boy. Um, yeah. I don't know, man. I, I would, I would be Dave. Dave said he never heard this. Sean, I believe also said for the last six weeks or so, whatever the time period was for this, he but never heard a word about in this. this. In this situation. And the truth lies somewhere in the middle of all these stories because perspective, what's going on, what people see and what people want to say is varied. And it creates this, we're in this Michigas right now. I don't think anybody on the AEW side or on the elite side, there's like 87 different sides of this. It's like the Trivial Pursuit Board. Yeah. Um, I don't think anybody on that side would want to say, yeah, a dog got hurt. Yes, of course. Like I, I yeah. if 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 Dave and Sean's sources were in those camps because it seems like Nick's report is the first time we've heard anything from the punk side at least reported, it would be it would behoove everybody on that side to not mention the fact that the dog that has been universally loved and celebrated got hit with a door Listen, because they I, were charging it. I also I, I spoke to people that are somewhat on the punk side of things. After this happened, I never heard anything about a dog. I was reached out by a bunch of people, people that people that uh, in WWE that that very much in, like punk people in AEW. You know, the, the, this I don't know. I, I'm very surprised by this coming out, of, you know, zero hour, essentially, when the determination has been made, unless there was some sort of gag order where nobody could talk, nobody could bring out facts. I, there's a lot here and, and something like that. Could, it also could be just trying to create a parachute it could for, be. Yeah. for punk on the way out. Just try to try to give him some of the higher ground. I don't, I don't think punk would lie about his dog. I feel like he would try if, if the, he was lying, if he was, uh, you know, if his camp, I don't know who it is in his camp. It could be a steel. It could be, you know, just random human being. It could be. But a there were a ton of people. people in that room. And that, that that's yeah. kind of the point, right? There, it wasn't. We're not talking about just two people in a room fighting and the dog was, you know, there, too. There were, I mean, in but when when it took it, it didn't just happen after 30. It, this was going on for a while. Yeah, it it. it. <sighs> It feels like Montreal. Like, all of this stuff <laughs> no, feels like crazy. AEW's Montreal and the anniversary's next week, but it is, like, how this story has turned into the biggest thing in wrestling. Yeah, and, and much and like Montreal. Com yeah, and it completely has cast a shadow over one of AEW's best events, coming on a hot run of TV, and also at the same time, the WWE quality and consistency-wise is meeting them on the A show. We all know SmackDown was doing well, but Raw's the elder statesman. It's about to enter its 30th year. And Raw's starting to turn tide. Some weeks it's great, yeah. some weeks it's just okay, but it hasn't been abysmal in, you know, since the changeover, I'd no, say since hasn't. SummerSlam. No, but it hasn't. For I, 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 sorry, go ahead. Andrew, I I've got a question for you. Yeah. 
we're both in marketing. We're both yeah. in, you know, the world of social media and public relations. <laughs> if you're given the... T- <laughs> yes, unfortunately. I'd, I'd much rather be doing this and eating mm-hmm. sandwiches. But for you, if you were called on a Monday on Monday morning, the day after this happens, or two days okay. after this happens, and you're asked, we'll give you seven figures for a year. You have to come in and manage this situation and find us a way out. Because the WWE, over the last 25 years, have built one of the best organizations in entertainment, in terms of business structure. Yes. They have PR people. They have all these things. AEW is much like the WWE at the start of the national expansion because you've got a lot of old, you know, you got a lot of wrestlers in power positions. You have a lot of people who are lifers in the industry in key positions. And then there's some people with executive experience, but a lot of that's on the Jaguar side of AEW. Yeah. There's, I, I don't know the level of within all these things where they have non-wrestling people handling some of these key positions, but if you were brought in, how would you attack this? Uh, uh, this specific issue? Yeah. Oh, it's an optics battle, for sure. Uh, and and yeah. listen, I think Tony's in, Tony's in a very difficult position. We're, we're going to go to a break in a couple of minutes, but I do want to talk about this. I want to continue this because Tony's, you know, it really comes down to what Tony's going to do. And I, like you said, it, some of this is just growing pains of a new company. And no matter how many things you put in place ahead of this, you are going to experience these problems because you never have dealt with it before. And I think this is what Tony is learning with, you know, having a locker room of lunatics. It's a crazy business. You know this firsthand. I know this. I'm around enough people in pro wrestling to know uh, what an insane industry this is. And it's not a team game. It's an individual game. And when that happens, people's egos come into play. Financials come into play. You know, th- th- all this goes on. I think I've got a comp. I've got a direct comp for it. Okay. Listen, hold it's that thought. It's the 77 Yankees. It's the 77 Yankees. Where's Thurman? Where's Thurman? <laughs> Guys, we're going to go to a quick Mox break. Mox is Thurman Munson. <laughs> Mox is Thurman Munson. We're going to go to a quick break. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition here on Halloween Eve. What do you call it? You call it Hallow's Eve? I, I call it Sunday. because I'm. What do we call it in New York? I, I think it's called Devil's Night. Or Devil's Mischief Night, is, Night? Mm-hmm. Mischief Night, Devil's Night, and, and Hollow's Eve. I think depending on mm-hmm. where you are, it's one or the other. I don't know. We never had this growing up. No. But New York, New York like, City? in Brooklyn, no. <laughs> it's Halloween really. every day, dude. <laughs> it's yeah. Halloween every day in Brooklyn. I was in, I was in Manhattan last night at Carnegie Hall to watch Weird Al Yankovic perform his original songs at a sold-out Carnegie Hall. Unbelievable concert experience. And the mix of people dressed up as Weird Al and the people meandering around Midtown Manhattan the same. in Halloween regalia. <laughs> I, I was just surprised none of them were any of the Times Square performers or trying to act like it for the tourists to try to get some tip money. Like, <laughs> well, that's listen, the easiest con now. No, too scary, man. You might get shot over there. Even mm. though they did put up signs <laughs> saying no guns in Times Square. You know, that's going to stop everything. Oh. We were talking about the CM Punk story, but I thought it deserved some more time here because uh, another piece of the puzzle is that there was a promo, a vignette for the Elite that aired during Dynamite where it shows the Elite in their, you know, major pivotal moments in the company and they're just disappearing. Thanos snapped his fingers and they are disintegrating and disappearing also uh, came out that the elite were backstage at dynamite getting ready for that return you know oh man if they could have only made money with this i it's just so millions of dollars millions of dollars left off the that table. kenny omega and and cm punk dream match would have been i mean something Listen, never say never, you know. Uh, you, had, you had blood and guts ready. You had, like, your next six months off of this incident, which is why initially I thought it was a work because this was leading in the full gear, and I thought with Kenny and all them coming back, it would be this huge bridging storyline, including MJF and the poker chip, leading into full gear, leading into revolution, yeah. and, you know, the big shows of 2023. You're saying when he lost his mind in the scrum, not not after the fight. Yeah, story, I, right? yeah no, that, like, when the press comp... No, I thought with the fight, too, because it just felt so out of... Bo- it felt like an out-of-body experience because 
you know about locker, you know, locker room fights have happened. These things happen. Pro wrestling is a bunch of alpha male or alpha male esque individuals all competing for the same spot, competing for airtime, competing for all these things, all within the constraints of traveling, living on the road, doing all these things. It it's bound to happen. Like it is it is a thing that is going to happen in that specific style of workplace. We see it in all yeah. combat sports, honestly. Um, it's so, it's weird that this one me- went the way it did because the way the beats of it all felt, it felt like something that was worked. Oh, of course. But as we Listen, get deeper you know, into it. Yeah, but we're going in this mentality where like, these are professionals, right? These are very much, they all know the importance of what they are doing today for tomorrow. Uh, the first thing that, you know, like this whole thing about how people don't want to work with punk. I could tell you, I, I spoke to a couple of guys on that roster, younger side, and the way they took it was, listen, it, it's not about Punk, it's not about the Bucks, it's not about Kenny, but all of those individuals know the importance for the, for the business, for this to work, so we don't look like fools. And the younger, a lot of the younger towns said, well, how, like, we, are, we suffered the most from this. No one else, because these guys are still going to make millions of dollars. Yeah. If something were to happen, you know, they would still be in a position of power and whatever, wherever they go, whatever they do. But, you know, when 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 you start these things start happening, who suffers that mid card, the lower end of the car, the young guys in the in the business that now are on a on a on a ship that people see as not the place to be. And I think that this is turned into a gigantic recruiting tool for the WWE. Because, oh, tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> because for all the WWE's faults, um, you know, just as a company, the the big thing is they kind of have a decent amount of control on keeping stuff like this from happening. And they know they try to conduct business in that way. But it also that comes with a heavy competitive advantage because the WWE has the institutions in place. And a lot of startup companies, and we've seen it from Impact all the way on down, don't have the same systems in place because they haven't been around as long. Yeah. And when you're in the business, you may not see what the other side of the business looks like. So when you're starting a company, some of these things just might completely miss your brain or you don't budget sure. for it or you hire people who you think can handle the role. But this is... This is unlike anything. Like being an HR person in pro wrestling <laughs> has to be the most annoying job. Like one of the most annoying jobs in America that isn't manual labor. Yeah, I, I would imagine it's it's a constant uh, <laughs> barrage of issues. So now what? What do you do now? The elite, they're back. Kenny Omega's back. You know, obviously the Bucks are back. Uh, Adam Cole, uh, hopefully he's he's back. So you have four guys there. You have that story of that trios title that they never even got a chance to defend. So I guess you you could go back to that and do that trios title. But I think now, you know, what do you do? I think the initial plan for the trios title was supposed to be the elite against, you know, the undisputed elite or the whatever they were going to yeah, end up yeah. calling that's, them. That's gone. Yeah, because Cole got hurt. O'Reilly had surgery and Bobby Fish is in the impact zone now. Yes. Um with with every this is the we talked about butterfly effects on the show when we did the extra about it last week. This is that butterfly effect. It cascaded across the entire business, but it also directly broke about 15 different things sure. AEW was trying to do and it's great that their ratings haven't really suffered for it. They've been still top five fighting against NBA programming, the MLB playoffs having to be moved around on their schedule. They're sitting at that million mark, so, regardless. It doesn't yeah. matter if it's a little shy or a little above. They're, they're at that million mark cons- cons- consistently every week. Yeah. And, and let's think about it for a second. The world of wrestling television has, and the world of television and content has completely changed. So getting a million viewers is a high watermark for a startup, despite the star power, despite all of that. Because let's remember, Impact on Spike did good numbers, but 
in, in when it when it was starting, but it's completely drained down. And they also were on Fox Sports Net for a few years. They were around well, for you, a do while. You remember, I, I can't remember, and I'll ask Dave this or Brian. I, I don't remember if the, those ratings, like those spike numbers that they were doing, was mm-hmm. can looked at as a positive. Because the WWE numbers were in the three million range at that point, right? We're we're going back to the Spike era when they but, when they left Spike and they went to USA. I, I I'm trying. I can't remember now, but I'm sure someone someone's going to be able to tell us this. I don't ever remember people saying like, "My gosh, look how great these impact numbers are." In with the benefit of hindsight, they were great numbers. In the benefit of um, hindsight, they were but, fantastic <clears throat> numbers. But they also impact also suffered, or, or TNA they were, really did suffer from. The the anti like it was almost like this very much this anti WCW thing was starting up again with with TNA. I, I think, think there were people hurt, that would never give it a chance. Yeah, and I think what hurt TNA was all the same problems that hurt WCW. Yeah, absolutely. When and almost almost started to completely cripple the WWE this year. Heavy reliance on guys from the past trying to pull in the quote-unquote casual fan, which is a big, you know, it's a big thing when it's WrestleMania season or SummerSlam season when you're trying to draw big houses and big ratings. But to curate fans who know of wrestling or the indie wrestling fan or the people who watch your competitor, oversaturating it with guys from the 80s and 90s when it's 2009, 2010 doesn't hurt. It's going to cripple you. And also... It was unfair competition because they were trying to prop themselves up as the WWE's competitor. Yeah. At a time where they were kind they were untouchable because they had just gone through all of this. Yeah. And what Listen, really no matter how many times you told was people, the move to Monday. The I'm I'm gonna I there were a number of issues that I had with Impact, even when I thought it was great, when it was really, really good. You know, there was a time frame that I very much enjoyed TNA. The early days of those penny pay per views, it was something very different. Uh, you know, they were offering you. It was it was, it was kind of nostalgia because you had guys that you recognized, but you also had great talent like AJ Styles, and you know later mm-hmm. on. But you had you had unbelievable talent with that X division. However, I can never get past two things that they did. One, the Impact Zone. Every week, it was too static, and it's almost the same problem that I've had with NXT. In the past, where it's too static, uh, and two, that ring. Mm, I I didn't hate the six sided ring. I never, and... I never liked the six sided ring, and I know there were people that love the six sided ring. I'm not convincing you, or will attempt to convince you that it. I <laughs> why you shouldn't like it. That's great for you. It just I I, I couldn't get behind it because you had guys like Kevin Nash in that ring or Sting, in this tiny it little was ring. Jarring. It was jar, yeah. It was the same problem that WCW. It wasn't had, where you tiny, had, tiny. I think it was tiny. a twenty footer. I, I no, think it I, was a twenty footer. I don't think so. Impossible. That thing was like eight feet by eight feet. No, it's not. I'm joking. <laughs> eight by eight by eight by eight by eight by eight by. Eight. Uh, it didn't do it for me. But I'm not telling you it wasn't. It, it was still. It had great moments. But was a million yeah. two million three really good ratings at that time? I don't know. I don't remember when when you're when you're adjusting for the time period. Not really, but you also have to look at the fact that it was on Spike, which at that time kind of was in a weird place where it was just like cops or your ones, the UFC or UFC yeah. and and Impact. That was pretty much it. Yeah. So there wasn't really a lot of programming there, and also they were fighting against the fact that they they were replacing the brand leader in the industry. It, it, I think we we look at competition in this business and don't see the fact that we could talk more about this after the break about how we don't temper our expectations for these different companies yeah. because all we're doing is having them as WWE trying to beat the WWE like they're WCW. Guys, we're going to be back right after this on Sports Byline Wrestling Observer Sunday edition. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition. A lot to talk about still on the show. Man, that CM Punk stuff took over, but we do have a lot to talk about. One big story here that came out this morning. Shinsuke Mm. Nakamura is facing the great Muda at Noah's Noah's show. uh, The New Year. Noah, the New Year 2023. Is that the name? Noah, the New Year. 
Yes, the new year, 2023. Well, so, it is the new year. That is it's, a new year. Correct. It is the new year. This is taking place on New Year's Day in Japan. You're getting Nakamura and Muda. This is very cool. I'm very into I, this. I, I'm, I'm so hyped for this because Muda, one of my favorite wrestlers. Yeah. And, yeah. Absolutely. And Nakamura over the last seven years, when I first saw him, when I was working at Ring of Honor um, live in the Manhattan Center, I was ringside for that. I was ring. I was the timekeeper that night. And it was just like, yep, yep. He's the best wrestler on the planet now. I, I can't like he was revelatory. Yeah, big time. Uh, and yeah, and that you can see the influences Muda had Naka, on Nakamura. I believe they had a prior relationship when they were in New Japan. I both, I believe they were both Antonio and Noki's pallbearers. Um, for when uh, he passed away for his funeral, but this is interesting that the WWE for the first time since what Michinoku Pro in the late nineties when Taker went over to face Shinsei Shinzaki. Like, is this the first time since that? Like, That's a great question. Having okay. that relationship? Okay, let's think about this. When is the last time a WWE talent went over to another company to wrestle? Let's start off with that. I, th I Well, outside of ECW, um, yeah. you know, McMahon did that indie spot. We're in uh, Chaotic. Uh, at, uh, at, uh, <laughs> at, at, at John Cena's father's promotion? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let, let, um, okay let's go. He was a manager there at the time. But let's go. Something that aired. Something with high production value. <laughs> let's go there. I think it's I think it's Taker Jinsei Shinzaki. I think it's that. It's and then if from you add like ECW, it has to be 2001. Yeah. Wow. I mean, this is pretty cool. Uh, you know, this is this is a great sign of change in that company. But here, here's what yeah. I'm seeing. Okay, what, what does this mean? Does Muda come over? One for you, one for me? I don't know about do that because that might. Th if the, I think that might be the Hall of Fame might be the play because St remember Sting's in Muda's last match. Sting is so in Muda's last match. Yeah. Yes, that it's going to be a tag of some sort. Um, I feel like, and there were rumors when NXT Japan was the thing. Oh yeah. That Muda and Noah were going to be a part of it. Well, NXT. Well, wasn't. Yeah, that was kind of the rumor, right? Uh, and you and I yeah, had spoken and, and, about and, this years ago that yeah. there were people that I believe were brought into WWE to kind of bridge this relationship. Mm -hmm. And I, I I spoke to someone at WWE and they, they mentioned years ago. I mean, this is I got to I got to go back and, and read these messages. But essentially, no one it was never going to be sold to WWE, but they were kind of using them. As a as a as a tool to get a better deal for a sale, uh, I don't know how accurate that is. That was said that, that you know that was said a couple times to me, but you know it just shows that there is some sort of relationship between these two. You know, it kind of continues that, and the fact that you have Nakamura going to face Muda in one of his final matches says a lot. But I do think that this will expand into the Hall of you know it, something. Yeah, Muda deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. Um... It would be interesting to see what happens. Like, there's a litany of guys who never stepped into a WWE ring that belong in that Hall of Fame. Mood is at the top of the list, well, near the top of the list, because there's a bunch Listen, of never say never. Why, why not? Why anyway. not have them show up on a Raw or a SmackDown? Because that might screw up the relationship AEW has with Noah, because they have a working relationship. It seems now. Uh, because of the Muda match with Sting being involved, Muda appearing at Grand Slam, and Wrestling politics are dumb. They're very dumb, and they're antithetical to the business because the business is built on cooperation. But when the biggest organization for the first half century of the business was run like a crime syndicate, there's a lot of mistrust and a lot of skullduggery. Yeah. So it does necessitate a lot of mistrust and the idea of competition but not competition. And I feel like this would be the best for everybody involved. And yeah. also, it is weird seeing the WWE take a globalist approach to wrestling after being <laughs> isolationist for so long. They really have been. They've been living on their own little island for a long time, and now they're opening that up. They tried. Listen, Hunt, that's always been Hunter's thing. That was the whole expansion with, with you know, Progress and Evolve and everything else that they were doing. 
there was a whole point to this. They wanted to expand, yeah, and, and, I, and it didn't happen. The pandemic obviously played a big part. The shift in NXT played a big part. Uh, you know, the main roster not being fed the guys that Vince wanted played a big part in this. But, you know, they're kind of going back backwards a little bit positively. This is a good change. Also, talking about also, change. Go ahead. I was just going to say real quickly, back in the territory days or back in the 90s when you sent guys to, you know, Memphis or you sent them to different territories when the WWF had that relationship with New Japan, you were able to send guys away, have them refresh, work a different schedule. They make good money. They come mm -hmm. back. This is a great way to Morale. rehab and retool yeah. guys. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like absolutely. It, it, it just creates fresh matchups and fresh opportunities, and it's good for everybody in the long term. Yeah. Ring of Honor final battle is set for December 10th. It's a 4 p.m. PLE or pay-per-view. It is a pay-per-view. You could order this on pay-per-view. It's a 4 p.m. show. The next day. There's going to be so it, many people mad that you said that. I know. I know. It is. I mean, technically it is. You get it on fight. That's a PLE. Uh, same day as NXT, UFC 292, and the Heisman Trophy presentation. So they have oh, so, a lot of competition. Yeah, them running at four so smart. <laughs> Yeah, because that UFC card in December is loaded. It is loaded. That and is a so loaded is UFC November card. Um, uh, so this is this is interesting, but I I expect the, them to announce the TV deal here. This is when you do it, right? This is the final show for the year. This is the final battle uh, of this old Ring of Honor, I guess you could say, pre TV. You're gonna have, you know, you're going in there loaded for sure when they get this television deal or whatever you want to call it if it's a streaming deal or television deal uh this is a very important time for ring of honor but also for aew because this is going to be their feeder system yeah you know I everything think... is a feeder system is required you need to cultivate tv talent tv talent not guys wrestling yeah. on, on dark or dark elevation you need people in front of you know a half a million people a week to kind of work and see what's working and what's not for you and this is going to be a good system for them to, to bring up talent, you know, get a guy over in Ring of Honor, make him this big deal. Oh, my gosh. Can you believe it? If he faces him or this one faces that, it's the same effect that NXT had with Kevin Owens showing up and, and confronting John Cena. You're going to get those and moments, also, and I think it's going to be important for them. Yeah, when you're battling of three hours of television a week, traditional television a week. And you have dark and dark elevation where some of the matches, I think the average match time is three and a half minutes. It doesn't really help those guys. But I would like to see more enhancement matches if Ring of Honor does come back in some form. And I think it's going to be on a streamer. I don't think it's going to be on traditional television. I think Ring of Honor is going to be on a digital platform. I have absolutely no idea where. Yeah. But... I, I think an HBO Max or even an outside player in the space, I think it might come from outside the Warner Media family because they're just looking for the best deal. But listen, there is rumors that some of these streaming providers are looking for partners, right? I I, yeah. I, I don't know if you've heard the same thing, but some of these, I, you know, uh, there, there's a multitude of them, right? There's Fight, obviously, yeah. which is wrestling inundated. Big part of their business. I don't think it's going to be wrestling. Fight. You got the zone, which is heavy in yeah. boxing and odd MMA promotions, but the reality is they don't have any wrestling on the zone. And and that's always been strange to me. I, I well, felt like that was a hand in glove kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, but remember remember the problems with the zone. When they initially started, it was the whole Canelo thing, right? And and they dumped so much money in boxing that for the right for the exclusivity, they really didn't have much of a budget to work with. But I mean, they're still around. They're still promoting. They're still. Uh, I mean, the zone is a destination yeah. for a lot of this boxing. Yeah, and also they have inter NFL rights internationally. They yeah. have uh, inter European football rights. Like, there's a lot there. So I mean, that package. And if I don't know if that's a reality for them, I mean, it could be. But you know, I, there I is don't rumbling. think it's fight. Yeah, I I think it's going to be if it's going to be it's going to be a non traditional sports partner. It's not going to be Disney or anything like that. No. But with with the way things are going right now, Ring of Honor has the chance to do a unique-looking show, a unique-looking product, and create that feeder system that is needed for AEW yeah. and to create situations where you can develop dream matches and turn a final battle or something into an annual cross-promotion pay-per-view 
and pick up the bag that was fumbled by Jim Crockett Promotions, that was fumbled by the WWE, that was fumbled by everybody else who bought a company and merged it and completely jobbed out the other side because they lost, ha, 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 LOL, you job now. Yeah, so that I'm very curious to see where this goes. Very curious. Crown Jewel from Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, 12 p.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. So far, the card. Brock versus Bobby Lashley, undisputed undisputed WWE World's Universal Heavyweight Champion of the Universe, Robin Reigns and Logan Paul. Uh, by the way, Jake Paul won. He beat Anderson Silva. Yeah. Um, a 25-year-old beat a 47-year-old yeah. in the sport he's never people, he's rarely competed in professionally. People are very excited for that, right? The OC versus Judgment Day, Drew McIntyre versus Karrion Cross in a steel cage match. Braun Strowman, Omos, undisputed tag team champions, the Usos and, and the Brawling Brutes. Raw Women's Champion Bianca Belair and Bailey so far for this card. Maybe they're going to announce some more stuff here. But this card doesn't look terrible. I'm interested to see no, what they do No, it looks here. like a fun card. It looks like a fun card I, I want to... I want to see what Logan Paul does against Roman Reigns. Yeah, me like, too, man. That would be the reason why I'm watching this, because I want to see what happens when you put the biggest name in our business against this guy, and he's going to have to bring it. And I know yeah. he's been training with Shawn Michaels down at the Performance Center. He's been putting in the work, but this, is, this isn't a, a tag team match. This isn't working... And it's not a slide at the Miz. This is a main event for the biggest title in the sport, you know, depending on who you talk yeah, to. Absolutely. Against the hottest guy in the business. Absolutely. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. We'll be right back after this. Wrestling Observer Live, final few minutes of the show here on Sports Byline. I wanted to touch on a couple things here. Uh, New Japan Rumble on 44th Street results. This was a packed show. A lot of people were very excited for this. Jay White and Juice Robinson defeated Okada and Eddie Kingston. Just some of the uh, the matches here. Did you watch any of this? Did you follow any of this? I you were papering. I, I was following it. I was I was I was papering outside. I was flying yeah. outside the the Palladium, which used to be the Sony Theater. That that thing has changed t- names more times than a Washington football team the last few. Yes, years. it has. But yeah. G- some people I know got opportunities on that show. It was a great card on paper. Shout out to Homicide, who you can see next Sunday at uh, Catalyst Wrestling. But uh, it was a great card, and it's awesome to see New Japan run these interesting venues in Midtown. Yeah, I mean, that, it is wild that they ran. <laughs> I wonder how many suits were in that crowd. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you go to a Midtown event, it's all guys in suits. It's Normally. right near the theater where the Lion King is. It's it's yeah. just it was an interesting cross section of humans walking down to Broadway. <laughs> yes, it was. Yes, it was. We also got a, a fascinating moment with Minoru Suzuki and uh, Ken Shamrock. Yeah. At the end, they uh, they Pancras. did a little thing together. Very cool. Pancras champions. I have uh, I've held that Pan- belt. And how Bob's heavy is that belt? Very heavy. Uh, my wife honestly thought for the longest time it said King of Pancakes. So whenever we would go to <laughs> Boss's gym, she, she, she's like, why does this guy? She's like, uh, she's like, what is that King of Pancakes title? I'm like, I'm like, no, it's King of Pancras. She's like, what is that? I'm like, oh, it was like, and I explained, I tried to explain it. She walked away. Just, you just, just sit down. We're going to watch these fights that may have been fake or may have been may, real. And you're going to love knows. every one of them. Don't question anything, but I love every single one of these fights. Don't question a thing. That me- that belt is made out of the the, the heaviest metals of the, of this planet. I, I swear to God, it's on a wall. The wall is coming down around it. So very interesting stuff, guys. That's it for this week. We're out of time. We'll be back next week on Wrestling Observer Live. See you next time.